Washington as the Senate raced on Friday to keep the government open, President Trump and other top Republicans are repeatedly and misleadingly warning that a shutdown would incapacitate the military but if for any reason it shuts down, the worst thing is what happens to our military, he said later Thursday at the Pentagon. Republican leaders have begun echoing that warning. The Speaker of the House, Paul D. Ryan, in an interview on Friday on Fox News, accused Democrats of legislative hostage-taking. And the collateral damage in this are the men and women in the military. In fact, contingency plans from the Pentagon as well as past experience show that many parts of the military would continue to operate even if the government is temporarily closed the threats never end, and so this department will never shut down, Dana W. White, a Pentagon spokeswoman, said in December. On Thursday, the House passed legislation to keep the government funded through February 16, but Republicans were struggling on Friday to muster enough votes in the Senate to approve a similar bill. Before midnight on Friday. That is the deadline to approve a new spending plan without which certain federal employees would be placed on unpaid furlough. But the Pentagon will, of course, continue to prosecute the war in Afghanistan and ongoing operations against Al Qaeda and the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, including preparation of forces for deployment into those conflicts, the Deputy Secretary of Defense, Patrick M. Shanahan, wrote in a memo on Thursday the department must, as well, continue many other operations necessary for the safety of human life or the protection of property, he wrote. The memo said that combat missions, training exercises, reconnaissance activities, intelligence gathering, and surveillance and telecommunications centers that are necessary for national security would all carry on. Counterterrorism operations and emergency responses to oil spills or fires would also not be affected, the memo said. Military hospitals and medical facilities would remain open and health care coverage for department employees would not lapse. All active duty military, including reserve forces, and civilian workers necessary to carry out or support accepted activities would continue to work, but would be paid once the government reopens. Military contractors who provide services under a fully funded contract that was awarded before the Friday deadline would also remain on the job. On Friday, Defense Secretary Jim Mattis estimated that the shutdown would furlough roughly 50% of his civilian workforce. That's 371,000 employees, or about 13%, out of a total workforce of nearly 3 million. There are 1.3 million active duty troops and 826,000 National Guard and Reserve Forces. But Mr. Mattis warned that maintenance activities and intelligence gathering operations not likely deemed necessary to national security and exempted by his deputy's memo would grind to a halt because of the shutdown. At its peak, the last shutdown in 2013 resulted in the furlough of about 850,000 employees a day, or 40% of the federal civilian workforce in the executive branch according to the Office of Management and Budget. That year, the Pentagon also did not furlough more than 1.3 million active military personnel, nor half of its civilian workforce. They were paid through the shutdown, even as other federal workers were furloughed. Legislation to do the same this year has been introduced in the House. And as Commander-in-Chief, Mr. Trump could also theoretically exempt anyone and activity he wishes to avert the devastating effect he claims a shutdown will have.